All right, welcome to the Robert Show, everyone. I'm super happy to host uh, Jeff Denworth, co-founder Was Data, today with me. Uh, Jeff, welcome to the Robert Show. Awesome to be here. Thank you for having me. Thanks, uh, Jeff. In uh, I, last week, I was at re, uh, reInvent and uh, I got to learn about a lot about Was Data platform, but uh, would you like? For just for our audience, would you like to give a brief outline of what uh, it is a, that you do? Sure, sure. Um, okay, so so what is the vast data platform? Uh, I think a lot of companies use this term in the marketplace. I'll tell you how we define it. Um, mm -hmm. When we started, uh, what we looked at was the the market landscape, and we realized that there were a ton of challenges with the way distributed systems were built uh, up until now. Um, oftentimes, pretty much any any modern data system that you can find is built from an architecture that came from Google like 20 years ago uh, when they built something called the Google File System. They put out a white paper. It was really famous. Um, and there's like a $100 billion industry that's kind of sprung out of that. And as we started to think about the needs of, of modern AI applications, what we realized is that you needed something that was much more transactional um, and much more sophisticated than what you found in the market. So we, we basically sought out to build a new distributed systems architecture. We'd, we'd argue it was the first one in 20 years that makes Flash really affordable, really scalable, and um, presents data in a number of ways that are in particular very important to um, large enterprises and service providers. So um, we have a data store that holds files and objects. We have a database that's designed for both structured transactions as well as analytics. And then what's coming early next year is something that we call the data engine, which is basically functions and triggers built into the software platform that allow us to kind of convert unstructured data, which is historically what um, you know people build very large archives around and things like this for, into structured data that businesses can actually work with. And so it's kind of this thinking machine that we're building um, over time. Okay, this is, these are pretty good insights, uh, Jeff. Thanks for that. Uh, yeah. In terms of uh, you know, last week, even at uh, AWS reInvent or before that at Big Data London, where I was, uh, I've been hearing a lot around generative AI. And we all know we've been, everyone is talking about generative AI and the, the real applications that are actually coming out of it. Uh, you know, you, so like, I want to definitely touch base on uh, the funding round that you recently had. Uh, but do you uh, was it mainly impacted by Gen AI moment, or can you explain Wasp's role in generative AI or AI in general, and how it's helping your business? Uh, would love to learn a little about that as well. Sure, sure. So, so you know, AI models uh, get trained with data, and mm -hmm. um, once those models are published out into inference infrastructure, they create a lot of data in the form of user prompts and user data that's being created and logs and stuff like that. And all of this needs to work in like the constant process. And so um, we've been really fortunate that um, if you build this new scalable architecture that makes uh, managing your data really affordable and is at the center of what generative AI is really good at, which is understanding unstructured data, um, we've, been, we've been working with some of the world's largest AI uh, model builders as well as model executors um, in the mm -hmm. world, right? So. That extends to large enterprises that are now trying to figure out a way to use generative AI for, to basically enhance all their, their business, their products and their services. It right. includes some of the world's largest technology companies like the web scale vendors that are launching these new AI based services. Um, but where you also find us is um, as the back end of, of really scalable new AI clouds. So these are some of the big cloud infrastructure players that are just starting to come onto the scene in a very big way. Um, companies like CoreWeave and Core42 and Lambda, um, some of the biggest GPU deployments um, that are happening right now are happening in, you know, not the classic tier one service providers that you've known. And so um, those organizations are playing a game of catch up. They have a tiger by the tail with respect to GPU deployments. Uh, and, and really what they need is something that's secure and multi-tenant to manage your data. Uh, and that's where we come in. So all these clouds are being yep. now built off of the vast data platform and that in particular has really propelled our business very, very quickly over the last couple of quarters. 
Okay, pretty interesting. Uh, and uh, thanks for sharing that. Uh, we also talk with companies all the time about their vision of the data stack. I believe Wast might call it an AI data stack, and that's what uh, you know. Obviously, I I spoke to a lot of leaders out there as well, and they mentioned about it. But yeah, any thoughts on that? Well, I think if you if you kind of look at what's happening in the market, actually there was a publication that came from an investment firm called Guggenheim the other day, and they said kind of hyper growth, the hyper growth phase is over. And they basically rolled out like all these big data players and said, these guys aren't growing more than like 30% anymore. Um, but if you think about the new data stack, and here we see like large language models on top of a data platform, on top of um, new AI clouds, on top of um, let's say, you know, kind of like very popular processors for AI computing, like NVIDIA, you have a whole new class of technologies that are growing, doubling, tripling, quadrupling in business every year. And so as we kind of think about the new data stack, it's, um, it is a, it is a very much a, kind of like an epicenter of growth in the market right now. And we're the, the data layer that sits between the hardware and the clouds that deploy this hardware and the mm -hmm. applications that get run on top of this. Okay. That's uh, pretty good. And, and just just a follow up question on that. Uh, I I also know uh, about the new category of data infrastructure that you're creating. Do you want to share a little about that, Jeff? Well, um, it's it's interesting. You, you know, the term I mentioned earlier, data platform. It has um, you know kind of classic understanding in the space where you know you, you've got very very large and popular companies like snowflake and databricks that are taking data platforms out to market but the, the realization that we made is that they're really focused on big data business intelligence reporting right. kind of classic business applications you can't take like a, a a genome and easily put it in a data warehouse you can't take a video and put it in a data warehouse the interesting thing yeah. is that that class of data, unstructured data, is growing at, um, it's, it's sized roughly at like 20 times bigger than the data that can fit naturally into a database or a data warehouse. And so what we see is if you build a, a, like a, a deep learning data platform, there's a mm -hmm. massive opportunity that's 20 times larger than the classic big data opportunity that is only possible because of neural networks and because of GPUs. Right. So, really exciting times because now you can take like most of the world's data that's been sitting in archives and has been dormant you can start to ask questions from it and you can start to discover upon it that's not been possible up until just very recently wow i i can only imagine building a new category takes so much uh work and so much research at the same time and you'll have gotten that journey in uh making that mark so thanks for sharing that jeff uh uh also uh, just just on this question, on December seventh, the Wast announced its Series E funding round. We hear Wast is cash flow positive. In um, is there is there any particular reason you're raising fund uh, funding right uh, funding round right now, or uh, any any thoughts around that? Well, um, when you when you built a business that's roughly tripling on an annualized mm -hmm. basis at the level that we are, you're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars of ARR, uh, annualized revenue. Um, right. And it's cash flow positive. You can imagine that we get a lot of investor interest. Um, now, cash flow positivity, to your point, means that you know it, it, we don't really need funding. Like there's, um, there's not a good application for it here. Um, but we do use these things, A, we use it to generate interest, right? Um, a, it's, it generates interest in the bank. Um, but really, you know, in terms of, overall global visibility, we want people to understand that something new and very special is happening here. And so yeah. um, we've almost tripled our valuation between now and 2021. If you think about this, wow. like most of the market is really down since then. So we're overperforming at a time where people are still underperforming. Um, and we wanted to tell the world that and, and having really like top tier investors like um, like Fidelity and NEA and, and Bond and, and Drive Capital, like these are organizations that are making very serious bets uh, and to have them come in and validate us has been very special. That's awesome and congrats on, uh, congrats again on, you know, the C uh, Series E funding. It definitely uh, you. Gives, you, gives you that uh, positive push as well in terms of the valuation and other stuff that you just mentioned. Uh, talking about that, uh, I what should customers expect from Wast in the next year from a product standpoint? Do you want to share anything around that? 
Um, well, from a product perspective, I think you can see a few things happening. One is we're, we're off creating um, partnerships with uh, many of the world's largest cloud builders, and we're creating partnerships with some of the world's largest uh, server vendors that are basically putting servers either in public or private cloud data centers. And so um, from a portability perspective, we kind of think about VAST as like the, um, the, the data center operating system or the data center data operating system that will basically be everywhere. And so mm -hmm. working a lot to make sure that we, wherever a customer wants to deploy their data, uh, we have a solution for them. And then on top of it, adding more and more intelligence into the system by adding uh, more sophisticated um, computing functions is a big part of like where we're going in terms of making this thing think for itself. Okay, that's awesome. Uh, also, one one interesting question that I've been asking all the data leaders, all the AI leaders out there, uh, since we are just around uh, the corner, twenty twenty four is just gonna come. Uh, are there any interesting data predictions for twenty twenty four that we can put on record by Jeff? Uh, the hype machine will not slow down. Is my bet. <laughs> How about that? Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, I think it's uh, amazing think to see the investments that customers are are planning to make next year. So I think this is going to go on for a very long time, and we're we're really fortunate to be right in the center of it. Love it. Uh, this is uh, awesome, Jeff. I can't wait to see uh, what's next for Vast. And uh, you mentioned about, like, obviously off air, you also mentioned about uh, the India market and you'll be here in Mumbai. So uh, happy to catch up and uh, we'll talk more about it in a different session for sure. Uh, but do you want to share anything uh, on top of your mind if you want to? Um, so we, we've just started our... Um kind of like our, our Asia Pacific expansion. And um, we have now a new sales leader that's come in, a gentleman by the name of Sunil. And he's, um, I, I have to say like, every time I talk to him, the only country he can talk about, it seems most of the time is India. So um, we've nice. been fortunate to be introduced to some really large um, and very progressive customers throughout India. And um, we're really excited about the potential for the platform there. Awesome. Can't wait. Uh, and all the best to capture the, capture the APAC market as well. And uh, quick one, Jeff, if folks want to reach out to you, learn more about Vast, uh, where can they reach out? Oh, you can reach out to me at jeff at vastdata.com. But if you want to reach out to Vast, you have to go to vastdata.com. Awesome. This was great, Jeff. Thanks for doing it. And thanks for taking the time out. Uh, Looking forward to seeing the great heights that Wast is reaching for sure. Cool. Well, thanks for having me on the show. Really cool. Awesome. Thank you very much.